Hi, it's Frankie Waters from Frankie's Garage. And I'm Evan Deli with Total Cost Involved Engineering. And today I'm going to be asking him a few questions about the company and himself and maybe a tour of the facility. Welcome to Frankie's Garage. We're here at TCI in Ontario, the huge facility, and I'm going to tell you a little bit how I met Evan. So, a person is really helping me out with uh, my headers. Uh, his name is Joe Ellis, and he recommended TCI for my suspension. And I'm going to be asking him a few questions about the company and what's on my car. So, how did you first get into cars? I got into cars back in the, well, since I started here in 85. Um, reading Hot Rod magazine, seeing the Boyd built Phaetons and Model A's and 32's just sparked my interest and grabbed me. So when I got the chance to come over here and work at TCI, of course I took the, I took the leap, came over here and I was a parts guy, stocking the shelves, putting springs up, doing whatever they wanted me to do for at least the first year that I was here. And that was, like I said, I started here in 85, so it's been over 33 years now. Dang, so you really worked up there. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah. I've had multiple careers, basically, all at the same company. Um, I, I got to do the shipping and receiving. I did assembly of cars. At one point, I was doing purchasing and sales. And then, of course, the sales got so big, I had to give the purchasing to an actual purchasing agent, and I did sales only and now I'm the sales manager. Dang, that's crazy. It is. And um, is this the only location of TCI? Yeah, this is our only spot here. We've got five buildings, over 50, 52 employees now. Yeah, 52 employees. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so what is TCI's specialty? Like what's made here? So yeah, we started with the early Ford product line and then that grew into the, the early Chevy cars as well. So we make independent front ends and leaf spring kits for those cars. But the chassis is really what started this out. And back in the day, we actually made the first coilover shock. That was another one of our, our big moments. Uh, there was a Coney shock out there. It wasn't anything else. So we built the All-American brand and that was our, the very, one of the very first hot rod shocks. And we still sell that shock today and we still sell the Model A chassis today. You know, so Henry Ford built Model A's for four years. We've been building them for over 45. Dang, so you kind of look and see what the people are wanting and don't really have access to and then you create it. Absolutely, absolutely. We go to a lot of the trade shows like the National Street Route Association, Nationals, Good Guys, car shows. And then as you saw, we do the NMCA autocross events and autocrossing with the uh, later model cars now. So we've always had a really good sense of what the customer wants and we've listened to their wants and needs. When you go to a show and you hear a hundred times, why don't you build Nova stuff? Why don't you build Mustang stuff? You know, because we were a hot rod company mm -hmm. and me being a, a Nova Camaro guy, it was only natural that, you know, 15 years ago, we started building Novas, Camaros, Mustangs at a high level. Mm -hmm. And now, as you can see, you know, one of our primary autocross cars here in the background has been to Optima. It's been to LS Fest. It's, you know, we've got cars that are competing in these venues like Optima and our, our teammates are winning the GTV class with our products mm -hmm. on their cars and driving them to the events. This car is a total street car with an LS7 in it. Yeah, it's got 650 horse, Lingenfelter engine, but it's a driver. Drive it to Texas, race it, drive it home. That's what Chad Recker, our, our guy that, uh, one of our guys that does the Optima stuff has done with his car. He put 46,000 miles on it in the last five years, driving to racing events and racing the car. You got to meet him out there at NMCA. Yeah. Um, and what makes TCI stand out? Recently, well, not recently, we've always stood behind our product. Mm -hmm. It's always been American made. We use American made steel, just like Snap-on does, for a reason, quality. We brought, you know, you probably are thinking, why do they have five buildings and 50 employees? Because when we boast American made, it is American made. Our, the foundry for our spindles is right here in California. We have a machine shop, we machine that spindle. We machine the pin, we press it in. Our boys welded in the back shop. The chassis rails are a four piece laser cut fabricated rail that they stitch weld together and then it goes into a fixture. Now, anything that we weld or make like a spindle has got a lifetime warranty. It also comes with a six year, 60,000 mile warranty on the wear items. We're talking about the Curry third member or the Willwood brakes 
or the, the, the master and the booster that we purchased, the, the power rack, we, uh, we cover all that in a warranty. So that really sets us apart from anybody else in the industry. We have an unmatched warranty. Nobody has what we've got there. And I don't care if it's my product or Will, Wood or Curry, we're gonna back it up. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and now maybe we can take a tour of the facility and show everyone around. We can, we can do that. Um, since we're here in R&D, you'll notice by looking around, there's a 32 chassis over there. There's a pickup chassis. We've got a couple C10s that we're working on. Um, Ed's Mustang's over in the corner. So everything we do is done at a high level. We test everything we build. You got to ride with us in our cars. Pretty much yeah. if we can't break it, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to play a little game. 10 seconds, how well do you know your car? So Frankie, what year is your car? 1967. What engine are we going to run? Well, we did a 416, now we're finding an LS motor. What are you going to run for a transmission? Um, that, I'm not sure, like they're trying to figure everything out. Hello, okay. Guys. <laughs> what are we putting for rear suspension? Um, of course, your stuff. Um, shoot, well. Ah, we got her, we got her. Second question, what are we using for our front suspension? Um, it's an IFS, right? Correct. Yes. So we've got our Pro Turn IFS. What are we going to run for brakes? Um, what, uh, Wood wheel, oh my gosh, wheel wood. <laughs> ah, wheel wood it is, wheel wood it is. Okay, Frankie, one more question. What are we gonna run for our independent front end? An IFS. Right? Okay. What are we running for rear suspension? Your stuff, TCI. Right? There you go, the torque arm. Yes. <laughs> and our rear end? Oh, uh, wait, wait, the, the rear suspension? Yep. Shoot. Uh... The nine inch Ford from Curry. <laughs> 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 You put her on the spot, that's funny. So what were the things that you recommended for my car and why? Well, when you came to us, you had talked about putting a 460 big block in a car with shock towers. <laughs> well, the shock towers are in the way. Um, to get headers in the car was gonna be a nightmare. And then the stock geometry on the stock suspension is just terrible. Plus, big block is an extra 150 to 250 pounds right on the nose. So after you came out autocrossing with us, you realized real quickly that we need to lighten the car up. We need to get a good suspension under the car so it'll turn, mm -hmm. it'll stop. So rack and pinion steering, adjustable coilover shocks, big wheelwood brakes, no shock towers, opens <laughs> up for a lot of possibilities. I mean, at that point, we could have run the big block, but it's so much added weight. So yeah. we've gone to the dark side and talked her into running an LS motor. Uh, the LS is probably the best scenario because if we get an aluminum block, aluminum heads, it's lightweight and it's very inexpensive horsepower. Yeah, some of the Ford guys might come down on us for that, but yeah. <laughs> we'll try to dress it up with some Ford valve covers or something to make it look uh, more like a Ford. But uh, for all intents and purposes of what we're doing, horsepower versus budget, yeah. the LS was the way to go. Yeah, so. it's the best way to go. So now we're gonna take a tour of this gigantic facility. I'll be showing her around. We've got five buildings here, over 52 employees. So we'll start uh, in our R&D department. We'll go through the chassis production shop, our small parts welding facility, and our machine shop. So you get to see it all. So where are we going and what happens there? All right, I'd like to start in the uh, machine shop. Uh, because we machine all of our own product, we can control the quality, we can control the lead time. So we have lots of product already built on the shelf, but I want you guys to see where it actually all starts. Uh, the machine shop, yeah, it's kind of boring, but you know, it's where we start. That's where we build the spindles. We cut the caliper brackets. We build the <laughs> A-arm tubing over there. So I really wanted to show you guys American steel in an American factory getting machined by us. Yeah. This is our machine shop, as you can see, we got a lot going on in here. We got CNC lathes with bar feeders so we can let them run all night. We got a couple CNC lathes to keep up with the CNC mill. Now this is a caliper bracket. This is a, a spindle here for our custom IFS and pro touring front end. And that's a 37 to 41 Ford drop axle spindle. We machine that as well. So we're still building to our roots. Now the early Ford product line last year was, it actually grew, it got bigger. Grandpa's car, 
dad's bucket list car. You know, luckily to see that the industry is still thriving. I mean, look at you, you're coming in, you've got a Mustang, it's, the whole family's involved. You know, we love to see it. You know, it's what we do, it's not really, you know, it's not a, you're not working every day when you're building people's dreams. And that's what we do, we're trying to fulfill dreams. All right, Frankie, now you've seen some of the other buildings. We're gonna go into the production welding shop, the assembly area, and then next will be our chassis welding shop. You're gonna need some safety glasses. Now you'll notice back here, there is a ton of fixtures. I mean hundreds of fixtures. There is a fixture for every piece we make. Axle brackets, coil over cross members. Now we've got everything back here barcoded so you can scan for the inventory. Each product category is lined up. Camaro, Nova, Mustang. You can see the cross members are laid up. You can see the pieces are bent up for the tubular A-arms. We're using uh, DOM steel, 156 wall usually, 7 8 and 1 inch, an inch and a quarter in some instances for our big bars. All of that is drawn over mandrel steel, mild steel. Everything that we make is either laser cut and bent or stamped. So you'll see there's a ton of bracketry, a ton of tubing. All of this has been cut up front. So you've got a shock mount, you've got a, you've got a tube that goes with that. You've got an axle bracket, you've got tubing that goes with that. So there is thousands of pieces of inventory back here. And it's all super, super organized. <laughs> well, we'd like to think so. Yeah. But yeah, thank God for barcodes and, mm. and Wi-Fi's so that we can quickly update because they are constantly going through inventory like butter back here. And we build as much of it as we can in, in uh, batches. Batches of 10, batches of 15. You know, if it's an A mover, B mover, it's on the shelf up front, so they can build 10 or 20 back here, feed the grocery store up front, the grocery store never runs out of food, so that's our goal. That's cool. Like I said, we gotta be able to ship it very quickly. Remember Frankie, we talked about the coilover shock? Yeah. Been making it for years. Shock, threaded weld on sleeve, all done here. But you'll notice all these guys are being fed product. They've already got their fixtures. They've got their marching orders for the day. That Camaro front clip right there, there's about eight hours of welding that goes into that clip. Whoa. It's all done in the fixture. And when Ed designed the fixture, he had to also figure out how to get it out when it's all welded. So there's a lot of trickery to building fixtures and making it so that you can get to the welds. You know, the welder's got to actually be able to get in there and get around it. So Ed, our founder, has always worked with the welders and the machine shop guys, put all their heads together. What works for you, what doesn't work. If there's something that needs to be modified, we always try to listen to the employee. Because the employee's the one doing the work. And we've made tons of changes due to that and bettered our systems to make things better, higher quality, quicker production. Yeah, that's, that sounds awesome. Right, it's huge, huh? Yeah. This is our rear end welding station. We've taken the pieces that Curry Enterprises supplies us. He's got the fixtures in place. We've got the tube lengths already cut. So we make a variety of different lengths. So here he's tacking everything together with the fixture installed. It's got billet plates. If that bar doesn't slide in and out after it's all welded, it's not straight. So we'll make sure it'll never leave here without being straight. Precision, every time. Next, I wanna do the uh, chassis production shop. There's a lot going on over there. You're gonna be amazed at how much is going on over there because we build the rails from scratch. Everything's done in a fixture again. And they, last year, we shipped 1.2 chassis a day. Whoa, 1.2. 1.2. So yeah, over a chassis a day in the chassis production shop. Now this shop over here builds the front ends and the rear end componentry. That shop over there builds a chassis they plumb it with brake lines over there, stick it on a pallet. Hopefully on the same day, that stuff goes up front, gets mated together, and out the door it goes. So the guy's got a complete rolling chassis when he gets it at home. So where are we right now? All right, we've made it into the chassis production shop. Now, Frankie, as you can see, the, the frame rails are one piece, four different pieces, all laser cut to the exact specifications of the original frame. Like if it's a 32 Ford frame, my frame rail is the exact same contour, same with the 35 to 40s. And all the mid-50s Chevy and Ford truck frames are also factory spec, 
only deeper. They're two by eight rails instead of two by six. They're gonna be fully boxed, they're gonna be stronger. It's gonna have a big X member welded in for much more rigidity. We know guys are running twin turbos and big LS power. So we gotta make sure our stuff's gonna hold up. That warranty's big. If, you know, they're gonna try to break it, I gotta make sure they can't. All right, there's a lot to see here. All the chassis start out on a, on a skeleton. So the outside three pieces get welded up. We'll show you that. And then after that, it gets boxed. So again, all done in a fixture. So let's show you some of the fixtures. This is the skeleton fixture that the outside three pieces go on. Now right now it's empty because they've already done this rail and now it's in the boxing phase. So they clamped it to that fixture there. Now they've boxed it. As you can see from the heat, don't touch it. They just welded it. <laughs> in a chassis for a truck, there's 48 feet of welding in those rails. Whoa. They're having to alternate their heat to keep, keep the warping down. They really know what they're doing. After they weld the edges, it'll go in the grinding room. They'll grind all the edges. Then they'll put those chassis rails into the fixture. The fixture are like these here. This chassis here is a 48 to 52 F14 truck. We also build the 53 to 6 F100, the 55 to 9 Chevys, and the 47 to 54 Chevys as well. What they're doing now is welding up the X members. They'll put the front and rear cross members in it. Then from here, they'll flip it. They'll put whatever engine and trans goes in it, like the LS or the 4L65E sitting there. Then from that, it'll move again over to that section over there and we'll do all the brake lines. We plumb all of our brake lines in stainless with A&N fittings, so high quality. We've even got a flaring tool that we got from the airport, pneumatic flare, perfect every time. Dang. Yeah. It must take a while for all the welding here. There is a lot of welding. And as, as you can see, it's a two-man team. Yeah. And then when it gets to the brake line area, one-man team. Wow. And like I said before, it doesn't leave this shop until it's on a pallet ready to ship. And each one of these guys is their own quality control manager. There is a quality control guy at the end, but if they say, see any flaws or a, a grind or a, there's a pinhole they don't like, they can stop production grab the manager, all right, I want this fixed, let's check this out. We try not to pass on any defects, we want it here. When you get it, we want it perfect. All right, Frankie, so you got to see the entire facility, all five buildings, you've seen every facet of what we do here, so being our 45th anniversary, I'm so glad you got a chance to come over and check us out, share it on your YouTube channel and all that, and we'd love to see the video when it's done, of course, so. Yeah, of course, and I appreciate so much, like everything that you've helped me out with, and I just like, I can't explain how grateful I am. Glad to hear it, and we're glad to be a part of it. And if you want to check out more of my videos, make sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys later, bye.